Okay, so this is a recording especially for the team at uh, Uniting that I spoke to on Friday. This is Michael Ma from the Aged Care Development Network. I know that a number of you didn't have access to the slides, so I thought I'd put together a quick 10 minute uh, walkthrough of the presentation that the people who are actually uh, in the room and got to see the slides got to see. So I hope this helps with understanding where we're coming from. As I said, when I met you, I used my uh, sister as, as an example of um, it's not always the clear place that you need to look for support. Um, my nephew was born six months ago and uh, all the focus is naturally on the baby and how the baby's going. And it wasn't until the other night when I was at a mate's place and I, his wife asked me how my, uh, my nephew was and I commented, uh, the nephew's fine, he's growing well, but the little bugger doesn't sleep properly and that's uh, sending my sister up the wall that she stopped and said, make sure your sister is getting the support she needs as well. It's very easy to focus on the baby, but uh, trust me, um, young mothers in that position can get into trouble as well. Uh, and she said that when she had her second child, she got both antenatal anger and then postnatal depression uh, going through that process. So it made, I thought it was a good analogy for what we're talking about here, which is, yes, we focus all of our time and attention on the residents or the users or the customers of the service, which is uh, the aim of where, why we're in this industry. But we also need to make sure that as part of that, we need to look after the people providing those services. So the aim of uh, what we're building here and what I'm going to demonstrate this afternoon covers both sides of that equation. So aged care is, there's two huge sides to the coin and one is the residents and the other is the staff. Uh, without a, a good quality workforce and so all the work being done around our improving RTOs and Cert 3 qualifications, etc, etc, there's the actual day-to-day -day aspects of these workers. Many of them work paycheck to paycheck. They can't see a career pathway. So a whole lot of stuff that where we can support the worker better. Because ultimately you as the organization and, and even more than you, your customers, your, your residents are the ultimate beneficiaries of anything we do to improve and support the workforce. So the workforce really is up there. And so how do we help engage uh, workers so that they, we, they can see a career pathway with us. So it's not only about attracting them, but engaging them so that we can retain them. Uh, giving access to the uh, education that's out there for professional development, both at a e-learning level, you know, University of Tasmania's dementia program type MOOCs and things, as well as the next step qualifications from the RTO or, or training world, as well as understanding the government funding that's out there. I find a lot of staff don't know what's happening in the industry. Uh, conversations I was having last year after CDC came in in community care, uh, they were talking about, or let's be blunt, they were bitching about their employers being tight asses um, about some of the things they carried in the field. And when I explained about how CDC is making it tighter, um, uh, sorry, it wasn't CDC, it was uh, complex needs, residential care. Um, how $1.2 billion being pulled out of um, complex needs in residential care meant that, yes, it was tighter. There might be four people on the floor instead of five. Or your manager might be coming down on you to make sure you don't have much wastage. But it was, it was making them understand or helping them to understand what was happening in the industry actually made them better workers. And the last bit is supportive technology. Um, there's so much time... Uh, wasted and, and money wasted, but also a risk to providers and to workers uh, through lack of technology in aged care. Everybody's doing their own thing. People are not sharing technology. Uh, it, it, this isn't why your facility is different to the provider down the road. This is all back office stuff, technology. So there really isn't a reason why there isn't greater collaboration uh, in technology. Why do we need technology? Well, because there's things that go beyond being able to do this paper-based. And number one is that the workers work for multiple employers at one time. Uh, they'll work for you, they'll work down the road at Booper and across the, across the town at Freemasons. And so as an employer, you're trying to track the same things, e-learning, uh, compliance things like police checks, 
understanding where they've worked before. Uh, when, when a carer comes to you for a job, having a verified history of where they've worked, what they've studied, what qualifications they have, so that you're not going off the complete um, bogus CV world, which is rampant in aged care. From an, a worker's point of view, you can show clearly how far you've come since you did your Cert 3. I did my Cert 3 here, then I got this experience, and I went back and did my Cert 4, and I brought lifestyle and health in there, uh, or disability, so I've expanded my, uh, my skill set. So the employee, good employees like it because they've got a verified history, and they can clearly demonstrate it. They're also not having to come in on their days off to repeat mandatory training that they've done down the road. And especially in the regional centres, where there might be one contractor in the town or in the area that teaches that particular skill, they might have to sit through the same course two or three times. And it, it's crazy, both from an employee point of view, but also as an employer, the time and effort you waste calling them in on their day off, paying their hourly rate for them to sit there. The other reason for technology is internally, most providers, their systems don't talk properly. So there isn't a single source of truth here. So what we're going to talk about today can actually provide that aspect so that the, the name and the, uh, the telephone number and all those pieces that are in the HR record are the same ones that are in the payroll system and in the rostering system. Because frequently you find the HR system, especially with the international workforce, it's got their real name, but in the rostering system, it's got their anglicized name. So that the two bits of data don't match up. Um, so it, it's hard to actually police. So we created one passport. It's a single source of truth uh, that an employee can carry around the industry and it plugs into whichever employer they land at or multiple concurrent employers. That last bit is the key differentiator. There is nothing out there in any industry, not only aged care, that has one individual against multiple concurrent employers. There are one employee to one employer structures. There are lots of those commercially available, but there wasn't one that tracked them right across an industry. Because we, we have to understand that in our industry, the majority of players work for, majority of staff work for three employers at one time. And then they're probably registered with one or two agencies as well. So there's potentially three to five interested parties who are trying to track them for compliance, e-learning, understand generally what kind of a worker they are. So the one password, when you open it up, this is how it looks. It's a bit similar to a LinkedIn style page when they can track all their compliance, education, employment history, skills, especially that skills areas. Uh, coming out in community care a lot recently is we need an Italian speaking piano playing carer. It's becoming very exact the kind of information you're uh, needing to track. It also might be that the workers recorded that in their own passport because people like to fill this in, like filling in a LinkedIn record. They're proud, but in their uh, employment documents that they've handed over to you, they might not actually have listed that they are a Russian speaker or an Italian speaker or a, or a Lebanese speaker or the fact they play the piano. So we capture a lot of data in here from all different sides and you get access to all of it. The first time they filled in, this could be as bogus as a CV. I, I admit that. The aim, though, is that as they get a job um, and they accept a job at Uniting, Uniting's HR system can write to their record uh, that they are an enrolled nurse or a carer at Uniting from this date until present or until the next date, and it puts a green verified stamp next to it, as you can see with the police check and the uh, diploma of nursing here. So when it is system generated, so a HR system from an employer or an RTO, student management system, or from a provider like a CV Checks police provider system, it actually gets this green verified stamp next to the data. So we're building a register of verified information, which is currently completely not available anywhere in the industry. This is a private record. No one sees it in this condition. Uh, it's purely for the worker to, to track everything they do and then it links into your HR system or your payroll or your rostering. And so you'll see it in the, in the format of your own systems. Unless the worker wants to use it as a CV. So up in the top right-hand right -hand corner, there's a little blue button that says public link. If they click on that, they get a public link that they can then use in an online job application. Uh, the link only it expires in 14 days. 
so it can only be used for job applications. You cannot uh, hold all those links and mine the data and steal staff, things like that. But they can use this as a CV. It basically sends through a PDF version of this page as a CV. Uh, you can keyword search it, etc., etc. It's a really good CV. So a number of the providers we work with actually use, they only accept CVs in this format. Because that means that the person actually has bothered to go in and set up a uh, record for themselves, which is free for any worker. Um, that's the first test. They want, if you can't be bothered to go and set this up, chances are you're not going to fit our culture. That one passport sits on a dashboard uh, behind the button that says My Profile. Um, on this dashboard, we wanted to put everything that a worker needs to have their, uh, their job in the sector. Uh, there's a CPD, Learning and Development Wallet there. Probably the most important one is the, down the bottom, the employee kiosk. Uh, a lot of payroll systems or a lot of workers said to us, you know, we, I work for three employers and each has a employee kiosk. Usually it comes out of the, uh, the payroll system. But because I work for three employers and I really don't, I'm not that IT illiterate, and they've each got a URL, username, and password, I kind of forget them. So I really don't use the employee kiosk. So the fact that your technology platform might have an employee kiosk at Uniting doesn't mean that your staff are using it because they also work down the road and they've got too many employee kiosks and they forget what they are. So we made the dashboard really easy where they can just drop the URL, the username and password of their employee kiosk onto the dashboard and when they log in they'll actually have all the different parts they need including three, four, five employee kiosks all lined up in a row. And this gives them a one login to everything. They just log into their dashboard and they've got access to everything. How it works is in the middle is a API driven, which basically means connecting marketplace. Uh, and here's Mary. And as Mary gets around the industry, she can write things in a passport, which goes into her record as unverified data. And then when she goes and gets a police check, that comes into the, her record as verified data. Visiting RTOs, training, that can also come in as verified data. And then finally from her employer, the fact that she's got a job with someone and the HRIS uh, adds that data her, to her one password, it comes again as verified data. And then all of that data goes out to anyone that Mary's listed as an interested party. So whenever she gets a job offer and she accepts it, part of the terms and conditions with that is that the privacy box is ticked, that that person, like Uniting, is an interested party in me. So whenever there is an event, Mary gets a new job, Mary leaves a job, Mary uh, lists a language, Mary completes a Cert 4 in something or a diploma in nursing, and it updates that central one password on Mary. It then updates on the left-hand side her ePortfolio or her one password there, and on the other side it updates the HR platform of all of her employers. So you can track where your staff are, what they're doing from a, from a compliance point of view, an e-learning point of view, just where their employment history is. Uh, all in one place. To make this work, it actually had genuine benefit, had to have genuine benefits such as being easy to use. Uh, a lot of our workforce is, they're not the, the most IT literate people. In fact, there's probably 15% in the industry who never use IT. And the next 40% use it, but it's to Skype the grandkids. So it's a bit of guiding through the process that they need. So it had to be easy to use. So it comes on both a, a browser, you can access it on the computer, as well as being on a smartphone, on an app. It does genuine real-time syncing across the, uh, between the different providers, uh, so the employers, police checks, individual, etc. So you can start to automate uh, processes, like they get a, when a, when a worker updates their police check by themselves or at another employer, you automatically get an update, not, in your, not just to your system, but actually updated in their HR record and it turns off the alarm that you have to have for them. And we provide, the system provides a single sign-on for you as well. Um, so instead of having multiple sign-ons, you can actually put everything together and have one passport plug into that. So that is one passport. Um, as I've uh, tried to outline, it has both benefits for both the, the employer as well as the worker side of the equation, um, based on lowering risk, saving time and money on both sides. Uh, the... We are looking and working with the technology department at, at Uniting about uh, where you're going with your technology roadmap and seeing how we can plug that in. Um, but 
The aim of today was to be able to get feedback from the different departments, uh, both you know, residential, community, disability, both metro and regional, about how your workforce would go with that, um, thoughts on it, thoughts on how we can improve it. Any of the above would be great feedback for us. I look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Have a great day. Bye-bye.